It's the largest distributed denial of service attack ever against a civilian agency. Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, the National Institutes of Health, which researches vaccines and pandemics, Food and Drug Administration, right? I mean, this is the backbone of the U.S. healthcare uh, system. The entire time this is happening, we're trying to communicate and prepare for full-on telework. We know coronavirus is about to hit the United States. When we started to have the discussion that we may have to shut it down, I felt that it was a nation-state effort against our network. Any attack against the healthcare system is a big deal. The fact that we may not know what they were really looking for and how they were looking to extract that data is critical. This was a huge cyber attack in the panicked early days of the COVID-19 pandemic, targeting a $1.8 trillion government agency. The truth of it has never been reported. This is the Department of Health and Human Services, and on March 16, 2020, they were going to full remote work. This was going to be the beginning of work from home for the entire federal U.S. government. HHS is a huge government agency and it has a budget about the same size as the entire Russian economy. Back in March 2020, it had assumed a particular significance because this had just happened. We expect to see the number of cases, the number of deaths and the number of affected countries climb. COVID-19 can be characterized as a pandemic. My name is Jose Arrieta. I was the Chief Information Officer, Chief Data Officer of the Department of Health and Human Services during the coronavirus pandemic. So 15 March 2020 was an interesting day. I had a friend stop by uh, around noon uh, and he actually brought over a really good bottle of scotch and he said, you gotta sip this. Uh, and my phone rang. The first words that we heard is, uh, Jose, uh, we have a serious issue. The fact that everybody was about to start working from home was significant. When the federal government went to work from home, network operators had to adjust all their firewall and security settings to allow hundreds of thousands of new unknown connections into their network. So they had to scale down their security all at the same time. And that's when the attack struck, when the network was at its most exposed. They had slowly been increasing scanning activity at HHS. So if you go from 300 million to 400 million, that's not a massive change. But once we went over a billion, that was kind of a threshold. We took notice to that. Which appeared to be an attempt to overwhelm the network and cause it to stop working at this critical juncture where the federal government was moving to work from home. That's what it initially looked like. Uh, it became alarming when we eclipsed over 6 billion scans. And if you think of Health and Human Services as a house, uh, what scanning activity is, is someone looking in the doors and windows of the house. So imagine if you had a house with 200 doors and windows, and 15,000 times a second, somebody was trying to enter those doors and windows. It would make it very hard for someone inside the house to leave. Uh, and that's what was happening to the HHS network. It was making it very hard for us to communicate via email, making it very hard for us to uh, collect data uh, throughout the United States. We had tested the system, we had made investments to prepare for this moment, and all of a sudden, all of the additional capabilities that we put in place so that they could easily work from home, all that additional bandwidth is now being consumed. We were extremely confused as to what was actually happening. Arietta and his team initially thought it was what is known as a distributed denial of service or DDoS attack. A denial of service attack means that I, as a computer or a sensor or even your home baby monitor, is able to go and just push information out in order to disrupt the operations inside another environment. A distributed denial attack is escalating it from one sensor or one computer to multiple, hundreds, thousands, hundreds of thousands of computers so now we start to get really concerned. And, and the question is, is, how do we deal with it, right? We know coronavirus is about to hit the United States and our ability to have command and control capabilities, communicate with federal, state, local community partners is imperative to our ability to respond, distribute ther therapeutics, predict hotspot outbreaks across the United States so that we can do testing, so that we can bring a vaccine online. And we need a network to actually do that. 
So the team set about trying to counter the attack, rerouting traffic and increasing network capacity. We started to actually move the internet traffic across the HHS network and something very abnormal happened. The actor, the adversary, actually started fouling us as we moved the internet traffic. No matter what they did, the attacker adapted, but it never took the network down entirely. It always stopped just short of the full capacity. That's what made Arietta rethink. What if this wasn't just a DDoS attack? What if it was something else entirely? They were trying to figure out what is your limit? What is your pressure point beyond which you will break? Let's be honest. For their ability to scale to that amount of bandwidth usage in that period of time, if they wanted to take us down, I, I strongly believe that they could have, uh, but they didn't. And that got them questioning, then if this isn't an attempt to take down the network, what is it about? And what they landed on was this was a scanning operation. This was an attempt, a successful attempt, to map the entirety of the health and human services network in very, very quick fashion. The coronavirus was happening. It was spiraling out of control. The adversary needed to know, how do we get into the network? What is on the network? What are our potential points of entry? And that's the value of a map. I remember speaking to the leadership of HHS and the instruction was very clear. The HHS network will not go down. So in the previous 24 hours, we saw a great deal of enhanced activity with relation to the HHS, uh, HHS computer systems and website. Fortunately, we have extremely strong barriers. We had no penetration into our network. The source of this enhanced activity remains under investigation. And we came to a point where there was nothing else we could do to keep it up. That basically said, look, I think we're gonna have to take the network offline. We're gonna to have to literally take the system completely offline. Let's do it in the evening when most people won't notice. And it has to come back. It, like, it has to come back within 10 minutes. You know, imagine all of this compute power from a million computers around the world are taking all this data and they're pushing it at this target, which is the HHS network. And then the network is taken offline. And now all of those computers are receiving error messages back saying, hey, we couldn't find the location that you sent us to. And it overwhelms those computers just like we were being overwhelmed. I, I call it a weapon, but it, it breaks the weapon, essentially. The network was down for 10 to 15 minutes, and then we brought it back online. And all of that traffic, all that pressure that we were experiencing was gone. It didn't exist and we were able to function at a normal level. I believe that the only two countries in the world that could probably launch something at that scale with that level of planning and coordination are Russia or China. Now the reason an adversary would want a map of a network like HHS's is to target future attacks. There are three main things that you could do with a map of the HHS network. The first is you would learn where its computers are and what those computers are doing and what they're connected to. The second thing you could then do is identify vulnerabilities and install backdoors, which would allow the hackers to come in and out undetected as they please. And the third most important thing is once you've enabled those capabilities, they could potentially have learned what's in the network. Most crucially at that point, what does the U.S. know about the coronavirus and what does the U.S. know about a potential vaccine? At that time, that would have been the most important intelligence that any intelligence agency in the world was looking for. This was like a nuclear weapon in the sense that a distributed denial of service attack that at the scale that we appeared to be experiencing would have ended our ability to function and operate. But I don't think that was the purpose. I think it was a head fake so that an, another action could be taken. The question is, what results were those bad actors trying to achieve? When you look inside a, a patient care system, you see all of these lights blinking and noises going and information flowing. Once you break those connections, you start endangering patient health care. And the idea that I like my health care records to be kept private. Ransomware and intrusion of data extraction compromises patient integrity. I think it's important that we have this discussion because I think the population of the United States needs to understand 
that we are actively engaged with adversaries that want to fundamentally change our way of life. And we need to continually support and invest in uh, securing our healthcare system. We still don't quite know what exactly the attack achieved, but the fact that they revealed they had this capability was in and of itself massively significant.